Okay, so version 9.1 of the Tyco software has just now been made available. And one of the exciting new features in this release is the ability to easily evaluate the quality of images in a given data set. So what I would like to be able to do right now is to demonstrate this new feature. So here I am at the image manager and I'm going to start off by adding some images here. There are 113 of them and we would consider this to be a single data set. And ideally we would like to avoid having to manually inspect every single image. Uh, instead we would prefer if there were an automated way to uh, perform that process. So if you go to the action menu you will notice a new menu item, Evaluate Images, and if you click on it, it presents a new window here, and there are several settings available. Uh, the first of which is performance related, so you can choose however many threads to operate in parallel, but what we really care about are these threshold settings. Uh, these essentially determine when and how a parameter is considered to be outside of tolerance. So there are three parameters here, plate solve residuals, star matching percent, and image shift. So the default settings here should work most, if not all the time. So you probably will not even have to adjust these settings, uh, but if you wanted to, you could do so. Now, the next feature here is that uh, if one of those parameters does in fact go outside of tolerance, it now also has the ability to abort uh, automatic runtime processing. So if you are conducting automated sky surveys, uh, this is a very nice feature to have because it will save you time. Uh, in other words, it will uh, not expend processing time on a data set that has poor quality. So uh, that's a nice feature, but there's a lot more to it than just that. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK here and you can get a better idea of what uh, this has to offer. So what it's doing now is it's populating this graph. This is a graph of limiting magnitude for each image in the data set. And so if I adjust uh, the window here, uh, you'll notice there was in fact a reduction in limiting magnitude. Uh, for some of these images, the uh, median limiting magnitude is said to be 16 and a half, uh, but some of these actually went to around 15.1. Uh, so that's a, quite a noticeable difference there. And this could be explained by cloud cover as one example. Uh, so if I go to action view images, we can see what that looks like visually. I can zoom in a bit here. And this started at around image number 23, ending at around image 42. So if we go to the image evaluation report, uh, this is a table. So this has all of the images in the data set. And again, starting at around image 23, uh, that is where that reduction took place. So if we wanted to see this visually, then I can show what that looks like. So here is a known good sample. And then image number 27 had a reduction. And so you can see that visually. So it's quite clear uh, that that difference uh, and what that looks like visually. But uh, again, we were able to see that pretty quickly just on this graph. So it's pretty nice to have that ability uh, to do so. There are, of course, other parameters for what have maximum. So you can trend that as well. A signal noise ratio, uh, that actually looks, and, and for the most part, will almost always mirror what the limiting magnitude is. And that's because limiting magnitude is computed as uh, the magnitude of sources at SNR equals 10. So in other words, what we're saying is that uh, when it achieves uh, an SNR of 10, uh, we consider that to be a limiting magnitude. Now, I'll go into more detail on how this works later, but uh, keep in mind that the accuracy uh, of this, of course, is also dependent upon your star catalog. So that may seem quite obvious to some, but uh, suffice to say, if your star catalog does not quite reach the depth that your images do, then this will be inaccurate. And I'll, I'll go ahead actually show that in more detail in a moment. Other parameters here, matching star percentage. So as you have that reduction in limited magnitude, 
SNR, it's not going to be able to match as many stars uh, as were found in that reference image. Uh, image shift, uh, this would be a measure of the alignment. So the images were aligned just fine, no issues. And that was also in tolerance. So let's go ahead and take a look at an example where uh, image shift, or, or rather the alignment, uh, was actually quite poor. So uh, actually the, the image shift was so bad that it actually was not able to measure uh, image shift. So let's, let's go ahead and take a look at that uh, on this data set here. Uh, so as you can see, it's actually uh, the image shift, it's actually computed to be as zero. It's just simply because it's not able to have sufficient number of samples, but it failed on a star match percentage. So in other words, it's saying it was not able to match stars with that reference image. And we can see that visually. If we animate the frames, uh, then you can see what that looks like. So uh, the, the images are simply not aligned. Now the plate solution was good. So if you zoom in, you can see it's able to match up catalog stars with the actual sources in the image on that reference frame. But again, uh, the, the actual images are not aligned. And that manifests itself as uh, failing this parameter, the star match percentage. So it's nice to know that it is able to detect that uh, even when it, it is so far misaligned that it, it's not able to compute uh, image shift. Now let's take a look at one last example here. This is a data set. In fact, this is the uh, data set DS3 available on the Tyco website if you want to try it out yourself. Uh, but uh, this is one where uh, it has all of the checks are passed. It, it has good quality. So let's take a look at that here real quickly. So you'll notice uh, a minor uh, increase in image shift, but uh, not, nothing uh, substantial. In fact, this is one where it had a, a meridian flip took place. Uh, but uh, the limiting magnitude is quite consistent so that there was no issue with cloud cover. And uh, it's able to, again, compute that limiting magnitude for a single image as well as a stacked image. So if I go to action view images, you can see what that looks like. So if I stack all the images here, so this is a stack of 60 images. And again, I mentioned limiting magnitude is that at which the source is at SNR equals to 10. So if I view object profile, and perhaps I'm able to find one where it has an SNR of 10. Uh, let's see if I'm able to do that here. Uh, so let's find one. This is SNR is uh, 5. And then here, here's one where SNR is 9.75. So as it happens, this is a catalog star, and it says that this star has magnitude of 19.4, and it, that in fact matches up with, uh, uh, for that stack limiting magnitude, 19.7. So it's, it's pretty much in line with that. So uh, on a single frame, would this star have been uh, considered uh, visible, if you will. Certainly it would have less uh, SNR. So single frame, it's very much within the, the background noise. So, and of course you would expect that. So anyway, the accuracy, again, as I mentioned earlier, is dependent upon the star catalog. So it's already, it's mostly accurate uh, for this, but if you were to truncate uh, your star catalog so that it does not go as deep as your image, then it will become wildly inaccurate. So let's try this one more time and you'll see what I mean. So I have intentionally set the star catalog to cut off at magnitude 15. And having done so, now these limiting magnitude values are not so accurate. And again, that's just because it's no longer able to find sources in the image at SNR equals to 10 for those catalog stars. So it's having to extrapolate uh, to, to, to try to compute what it would be. And as a result, it's simply not as accurate. So just keep that in mind. If you want it to be an accurate uh, 
value your star catalog has to go as faint as, if not more so, than your actual images. So that's about it for now. Uh, this is again, it's, it's a new feature. It's kind of nice to have uh, to be able to automate that process where you, ideally you will not have to uh, manually inspect every single image and it's, it provides a nice quality check for that. So uh, I will say not every single attribute of a data set is able to be evaluated here. For example, if you are doing astrometry of moving objects, of course, one of the important parameters there is the timestamps of those images. And of course, it's not able to determine if you had accurate GPS time stamps or not. Uh, it, that's not simply something that it's able to do, but uh, it's, at a glance, it's able to look at a number of features here, a number of parameters that uh, could be used to help uh, determine uh, whether or not a, a data set is of sufficient quality uh, to proceed with processing. So again, that's about it for now. Thank you for watching and see you next time.